Well, well, well. I bet you didn't expect that video title, did you? I bet you didn't expect this on the channel, did you? This is how we're going to spend the World Cup. Let's have some fun. Let's bring it back. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play some football manager, shall we? Right, it's the World Cup break. I told you that we were going to be doing things a little bit different. And don't worry, my normal content isn't going away. So if you've clicked on this for at least, you know, 30 or 45 seconds just to hear what I'm saying, then quickly, my normal content will resume as normal. When there is stuff to talk about, we will talk about it. But in the meantime, to fill the void of non-Celtic related activity, we may as well fill it with somewhat Celtic related activity if Ange Postacoglu suddenly wasn't Celtic manager. And yes... You're all lucky enough to be in the presence of the next best thing. And that is me, Ryan Fitzsimons, playing football manager in charge of Celtic. Yes. Why don't we then? Why, why not? It's been such a long time. People have begged for me to bring back football manager content on the channel. And I thought, do you know what? If there's ever a time to do it, it's during this World Cup. We may as well fill the month in with a bit of fun because I have the drive to do it. You know, I need to make something. I need to make my money. I need to bring out content. So football manager's the way forward, it would seem. Feels like so long since I've done this. I do you know what? Last year altogether, I barely played any football manager. On FM 22, I only played the game briefly on a, a Bayer Leverkusen save that I had running. Um, so I bought FM23. I feel like I've had a year off from playing the game. I'm trying to throw myself back to the great times of me and David doing the multiplayer stream. You know, that was that was peak football manager, both for myself personally and for the content on the channel and for you guys. It was, it was the peak of football manager content. Will I ever be able to recreate anything like that? Probably not, but we're going to give it a hell of a good go in this save and we're going to try and take Celtic to the next level that hasn't quite been achieved yet. I use the word yet under Postacoglu. I use the word yet because, well, you know, there's still a long way to go and Postacoglu can take us far in Europe. It's just a matter of uh, waiting for it. But with this, the waiting will stop. Celtic high off at Simon. Celtic have today confirmed the appointment of Ryan Fitzsimons as the club new manager. 32 years old. The light has just collapsed on me. What on it? The, the light has lit the light is, is burning my arm as we speak. The manager has been hospitalised. The game's a bogey. Save over. No, 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 just about to lapse again. Oh, there it comes. 26 grand a week. That's no bad, is it? 26 grand, I'll take that. But Fitzsimons will be managing one of his favourite clubs and the significance of this appointment will certainly not be lost on either him or the team supporters. He, he replaces manager Ange Postacoglu. Let's, let's just get into this. Here's, here's what we're looking at. We, I think we're pretty you know, familiar with Celtic's history by now. I, I would be stunned if I wasn't. Um, it's definitely, so. you know, that European Cup there, that's what we want to build on, that. We want to get as close to that as possible. Michael Nicholson has invited me in. What's happened, Specky? Have a cheek. And apparently this is our best 11. Th this, this, really? Really, apparently this is Celtic's best. Can we have a closer look at that, please? This is what they're saying. So they're saying that Arbuild guard Moy, Dyson Maida, and Kyogo on the left. That's the, that, no. No, no, no we're cha that'll be changed. Expectation, club vision, signed players under the age of 23 is favoured. We're required to work within the wage budget. We're required to win the league. They want us to be competitive in the Champions League. So it's a big ask in the first season. And then basically everything else is what you would expect Celtic to be all about. Um, our supporter liaison officer has asked you to be provided for clubs, culture and expectations. Beco become the most... What do you mean become the most reputable team in Scotland? We are the most reputable team in Scotland. Challenge for the title. Finish above Rangers. Easy days, boys. I've got your backs. And we're in. We're here. It's very familiar. FM hasn't changed much. In fact, this year's game has come under a lot of criticism for basically being the same game. But I basically took a year out. So there's some things that I'm still relatively new to. But I I'm basically familiar with absolutely everything. This is something new. This is the supporter profile of Celtic. So this basically tells you everything about the club. It's expectations by the fans and blah, blah, blah. Um, social media, 4.3 million followers. 53,000 
thousand season ticket holders. Apparently, in the waiting list, there's sixty six thousand people. Don't ask me if that's true to real life. I don't know if there's that many people in the season ticket waiting list, but apparently so. The supporters' influence on the board is high. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie here. Judging off the last few years at Celtic, I don't think we have that much of an influence on the board. To be honest, sometimes, I don't think they care. So I think FM has, has got that one wrong, ever, ever so slightly. But this is, the, this is the fun part. This is the um, supporters' profile of Celtic and how they break it down into how our followers are, are kind of split into groups. So apparently... 10% of the Celtic support are hardcore, which hardcore supporters are the most loyal and passionate section of the fan base. So there you go, 10% are hardcore. We've then got a 37% core supporter base, which is the average fan, you know, your da, perhaps, um, if he's not hardcore, that is. Uh, family, we've got 14% family, which are the kind of, you know, think of the family stand at Celtic Park, school trips and stuff like that. Fair waiver fans, 22%, which are the ones that come out when it's good weather you know they're, they're, they're kind of you know they're just yeah they're there apparently that's 22 percent of the fan base corporate three percent your rod stewart's and such and then finally 14 percent casual supporters less passionate and loyal it doesn't mean casuals it doesn't mean like you know danny dyer cutting about with his uh fucking gazelles or in the tracksuit no like casual fan you know he's the yeah um so yeah it was it's fair weather what i think fair weather supporters are especially impatient for success i don't know what that means i thought that meant people that came out when the weather's good am i wrong i don't know anyway 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 club vision and expectation we will accept to work within the vision of the club they want a tactical direction but we'll come to that i'm not going to do that right now because you know we've got to look over the squad this is what we have to work with in football manager this year and a very very impressive Celtic side. You look at some of the players in this year's game, by the way, they're very, very good. Today's episode's got to be more about setting up the tactic, looking at transfer targets in certain areas we might need to improve, and looking over the squad, because my oh my, this boy especially apparently becomes a wonder kid in this year's game. So in terms of current ability, this is apparently our players from best to worst. Callum McGregor tops the list with, once again, a very impressive profile in football manager. He looks good. Um, a lot of green stats mentally, physically, and even technically a very good player. Of course, he will be captaining the side. He will be running it from the middle of the park. So we know that. Jota, I've been very excited to see. Wow, look at that. 17 dribbling, 16 technique, 18 flair, 16 agility. He's going to be the definition of, you know, a tricky winger in this game. He's going to be running it for us on the left-hand side. So I've been very excited to use him. Somebody who I've been very excited to look at is my boy, my baby, whose face is not in the game yet. I need a face back. Siad Haksabanovic. It's happened. Well, back with Haksabanovic and FM. We're here. If you were here for FM fucking 17 five years ago, you remember we had 18-year-old Haksabanovic running the left-hand side. We're back with him. Now, the question is, how are we going to incorporate all these wingers. You know Ange. Ange, for example, has a very good system where he can get everybody involved, he rotates, and it makes sure all these players gets their time in the spotlight. Will I be as good as that, or am I going to be so stubborn to my starting 11? Because normally, if you've been watching these things, you'll know that I am. Uh, we've got Kyogo, of course, who, you know, good mental and physical stats, but I think his, his technical stats actually let him down a little bit in this game. So I wonder what it's going to be like for him and Giacomacus. For me right now, I look at the player profiles and I actually like the look of, of Giacomacus a bit better. Um, this is their kind of comparisons here, and as you can see, Giacomacus mentally better, aerial is better, attacking better, physical better. Defending doesn't matter for either of them, so Kyogo wins on kind of speed, vision, and somehow technical. Oh, even though I think that, well, you look at these kind of long shots and stuff, Yakimakis isn't that good dribbling, crossing, but I think that for a striker, Yakimakis is going to have more of what I want in my team to be the starter. But someone who's apparently very good in this game is Dyson Maida. If you look here, 
at his reports and look at his physical stats unbelievable and even his mental stats unbelievably good um it's obviously once again finishing and such that, are, that is going to let probably these guys down at yakimakis is the, the the typical finisher of the team but kyogo and maida for as much as i love them how successful will they be in this game if they, if they don't have the finishing ability that, that some others do anyway that's in terms of current ability in terms of potential apparently bernabe has great potential he can turn into a great player how long will it take for him to take taylor's place matt o'reilly of course obviously one of the guys who has great potential in this game as well so we have got a decent squad to play about and work with we've not even looked at the youth team yet but in terms of our, our current squad at the minute it's looking good here's the b team uh and the b team has a couple of players who potential look okay mackenzie Cars, matthew anderson at the top of those lists i was hoping that rocco vata would have a good profile but i can't even see is it just me or is rocco Vata? is rocco Vata not in the game yet because he's he's still young or no there he's there rocco Vata. i was hoping he he does look he looks decent by the way he looks really good he's got the irish nationality in this i think that rocco Vata could be a fantastic he's up for loan apparently he is going to get involved in this team sooner rather than later i'm telling you i will bed him in and on the right hand side he is the natural heir to the abada throne but there's your kind of under 18s best potential daniel kelly up there as well and the b team uh, a lot of players obviously out on loan like mikey johnson liam scales but uh oh there he is barky but anyway i'm going to try and set up what i want to do with a celtic side we'll probably be similar to what Ange Postacoglu does but that's going to help me identify where i think we should improve one thing we should check actually one thing we really should check is how much money they're giving us to spend so two and a half million pounds is what we have and there's also a lot of clauses that we could choose to cash in on if we want to but i'm not going to cash in on any of them yet because i think for the likes of edward we should see something come through and um, but two and a half million pounds it's not a massive amount of money i would like to kind of use and get to know our squad a bit in this game as well but probably enough money for one maybe two signings there if we want to splash cash probably on one it'd be enough um but let's go and ask a with this and we can maybe identify areas i want to get as close to the first game as possible in, the, in this first episode you know what i'm saying so the board have advised me to appoint a technical director and nicky butt i'm actually going to do it for my manchester united staff it takes away some of my responsibilities as well because we are just playing football managers not real life in real life i wouldn't want nicky butt to be coming in as a technical director but you know what this is my side i'm bringing in nicky he's good for he was good at manchester united as a player uh, it was, he worked there for a while big club he will have a good feel about him they also want me to add uh, some physios and uh, that's all boring why am i even telling you this before we actually discuss tactics and such let me let me introduce myself to the squad this should be relatively easy i'm not going to make any sudden promises i'd imagine you might be a bit more forthcoming with ideas for the future say ad don't fall out my son don't don't do you know what don't fall out of me i just don't want it i don't want it you know everybody else is encouraged they're positive but say is a bit down just you calm it son because i think we're going to win the league he's pleased it's exactly the reaction i was after i'd like us to be competitive in the champions league mcgregor sounds good brilliant what i wanted to hear i want us to win the scottish cup brilliant what i wanted to hear uh code of conduct everybody seems happy lovely uh excellent but look at that what a happy i am a leader of man a pleaser of people so here, here comes the tough part now how do i want to play i mean celtic shape as we all know is kind of like you know if we're trying to drag in here you know we, we, we are we are kind of familiar now with celtic playing this sort of fourth come on come please oh whoa ryan whoa but we are kind of familiar with celtic playing this sort of four three three aren't we this is what we became used to seeing under celtic you know with mcgregor kind of playing in the holding role uh, and then we've had the two hatati and o'reilly in here blah 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 that's what we used to be playing now the question is do i want to stick with that or do i want to change things a little I, I, and to be honest i think i do want to change things a little i, I kind of want somebody to fill this gap here and i think that means bringing up one of our players to kind of play more in there and i think we'll have mcgregor probably playing in this position here but we'll have him you know kind of deep lying so that he's sort of still being a defensive if you could say but you know it gives us the possibility of moving o'reilly or or, or hatati kind of up if they like it i feel like it's just going to complement the striker a bit better in this game when you look at the likes of kyogo having 13 finishing and you look at the likes of maida having 11 finishing i think that the opportunity to have someone in behind and creating more chances is probably just going to help us a little bit more 
So in terms of shape, that's what I'm going for. That is the shape. Um, it's all about actually creating my tactic now, and I think this will fare better maybe in maybe in Europe. We can actually drag you know someone back, and we can have a second sort of tactic. You know, we can create a couple. But for the league, I want us to score as many goals as possible, and that by bringing in a, bringing in an attacking midfielder, I kind of think that will happen. So in terms of dis destructions, no, I don't. No, no, we're not destructing any. Well, well instructions right this is i've decided to play a bit more narrower so we, i'm going to play with inside forwards i want jota and haxabanovic or whoever my winger combination is going to be to be able to come in i want to cut in whenever I ha they have the opportunity and by playing narrower i think we'll get more of that play out from the defense like we do in real life a higher tempo and walk the ball into the box I, I bet like how celtic do in this moment in time um counter pressing not quite going to go full on counter attack yet but distribute it quickly Keep it um, from the goal kicks, you know, kind of distribute from the back and work from there. Kind of what Celtic do in real life as well. High line, higher press, uh, prevent the shot, goalkeeper distribution and press more often. Now, there's new instructions been added to FM this year with defensive lines, press and traps and cross engagement. So this basically allows you to, you know, if you want to stop crosses, invite crosses, trap them inside or outside and ask if you want your defensive line to step up or drop off. Now, I think these instructions are are probably more temperamental in the sense that I think it depends on how the game's going. I think it depends who you're playing. Then these will come in. You know, if you're playing a game and you see that someone is dying to cross the ball in, then try and stop the crosses. If someone's trying to play through the middle, trap them in, like trap them outside, force them to make crosses. You know, we'll, we'll probably use that as we adapt to, to different situations. So apart from that, that's what I'm going to go with for, for now. And then I've got to just get people on the roles that I want them to be on. You know, I want inside forwards. I want people to be, you know, coming inside. Yeah, we'll, we'll set all this up and I'm going to put out what I think is my favourite 11 at this moment in time. Right, I think we've ran into what I think may be our, our first problem. I assumed that Matt O'Reilly would be able to play in here in this number 10 sort of role. He can't really. He could. There's no saying he can't do it. But he's not as comfortable as what he would be even playing as a CDM. Um, and I assumed that Hitati could as well. And Hitati, slightly better can also kind of fill in there, but does he, does he, do we try it, or do we just go with the classic Celtic approach and put, do you know what, I'm going to try it, I'm going to be adventurous, there's no point in just copying Ange, I'm going to move Hitati into the 10 for now, and do you know what, we could maybe spend our money on bringing in a natural number 10. Now, we have got a squad planner, which allows us to look through, you know, like this is the plan of like, you know, if we season after, blah, 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 who's going to be here. But uh, this is new. But what you can check is, you know, if you click on here, we've also, yeah, this is this is the kind of guys who are, are more natural at number 10 roles. Moy, Turnbull, Hatati can, and Haxabanovic. So, I mean, we could play Moy. We could play Turnbull. There's nothing stopping us playing David Turnbull in at the 10 because his stats are actually really, really good. Um, oh, we could play about with this a little bit, actually. Right, there is method to the madness. This is what I think is our best team at the moment. Well, my preferred team at the moment. Not saying it's our best team, but I'm going for Juranovic and Taylor as the wing back. Starfelt and Vickers, I think the back four picks itself. So in the midfield, I've got McGregor, O'Reilly and Hitati as this sort of three with Hitati and a 10. Hitati being an advanced playmaker, O'Reilly and McGregor being the two holding midfielders. O'Reilly being a deep line playmaker and McGregor being that box to box. We know that McGregor has got lungs for days. His stamina is 17, natural fitness 18. He can get back and forth and play in that role all day long. So I'm going to keep him in there for now. We've got the inside falls of Haxa and Jota on the right. I just think it's our best. And I'm putting Giacomacus up front for now. There will be a lot of rotation in this team, just as there is in real life. But this is my favoured 11 for now. Obviously, we need to see how things go. Things might change. I'm actually going to put the inside forwards on a sort of more attacking just now. And I think for now, this is what I think is my favourite 11. Obviously, I need to see how the tactic fares, the roles fare, and then it might change a little bit. But I like this. And we've got great options for Kyogo, Dyson, Moy, Turnbull, Abada, all to come off the bench. Burnaby as well has that great potential. We have a real, we're a really strong, but these two can, yeah, Sorrow and, uh, yeah, yeah, you can leave. We're in a really strong position now that they're gone. So, I think that kind of does it for the introductory episode. Now, if we look into the scouting recommendations, so far this is players that the, the club have scouted. We're scouting the world, which is good. We've got the world package already set. So we're looking everywhere, Argentina, Brazil, and all the likes. But right now, these are the, the top players that the scouts are recommending. None of them names jumping out to me as must signs. I mean, Ryan Porteous, for fuck's sake. But there's not a lot of great people here that I'm really bothered about at this moment in time. So in the next episode, I guess, 
recruitment is key looking at areas we could rec- recruit the data hop hasn't kick it started yet it needs to wait a few games um but yeah what do you think where should we try to improve what do you think of this team we'll be back tomorrow with episode two where we'll hopefully be into our first few games of the season we've got a friendly but they'll be skipped first games against aberdeen of course and hopefully we can get a win in that we beat marseille by the way 2-1 not a bad result not a bad result anyway that'll do it for today like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it i hope you have it's good to be back on some football manager and yeah i'll see you all next time